um, when I was shuffling out this spread, one of the uh, images that crept up and uh, it was kind of strange. Um, I see you on a unicorn and um, everything looks very cartoon like. OK, so the unicorn was like um, white unicorn with like rainbow color manes. And um, wherever it went or flew to, it left like a trail of rainbow and, and fairy dust and everything was very shimmery. And um, I see it coming across the screen from the left to the right. So the, the unicorn was flying like this and then you're on top of it. And you're pointing at the clouds, you're pointing at the moon, you're pointing at the castles in the background, you're pointing at treetops and everything was very shimmery. It's almost like everything was so magical. Everything was brand new. And I just felt this overwhelming sense of excitement. It's it's almost like you're so anxious about seeing all of these things and you know, you're marveling at everything. There were spectacles everywhere and, and it, it just felt like everything was very intense. Everything was very colorful. You were uh, distracted by every shimmering, colorful thing in your environment. So that's what it feels like to me. So needless to say, I feel like there's a lot of things happening this week that are brand new, that are different, that are that requires um, adjustments to. But everything is so shimmery and brand new, it could also indicate to me a sense of like, uh, you know, feeling starry-eyed, feeling a little bit like I wouldn't say optimistic. Optimism is always very good, but um, it's almost like a fool's paradise. So I just want you to be a little bit more level headed. OK, uh, let the let the dust kind of settle and then you start to see things for what they are. You start to see people for what they are. So this is a, a week where your imagination is running wild with you. And this is a week where you're seeing things, um, brand new things for the very first time. And I feel like it's gotten you um, very excited. But at the same time, you want to wait for the dust to settle. You don't want to form opinions about things and people too fast. You want to let that, you know, honeymoon stage kind of wear off before you can settle down and start to see the reality of, of, of things. OK. Um, let's go into this spread here. You have two aces and um, the, the spread looks really, really good in terms of hopes, aspirations, things that you are conjuring up and trying to manifest. So what I have here is the Ace of Cups. And I know this is a very non-traditional deck, um, but I feel like the, the black and white might be appropriate for you. So first of all, Ace of Cups, this is like... Um, channeling more of the maternal instincts, getting more in touch with your feminine self and dealing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot heavily with women. OK, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just Aquarius is a very masculine sign. OK, and a lot of the times you kind of downplay that more, the, the more feminine, what we attribute to be more feminine qualities, okay? Like making the emotional connections, being nurturing, being caring, being ava uh, emotionally available, as well as revealing our deepest, darkest um, needs, desires, and making ourselves feel vulnerable so that we can have that emotional connection with other people. So, what I do feel coming through is this is a week where it's going to require a lot more of your intuition. OK, so like I said before, you're on this unicorn. It's a magical journey through the skies. Everything that you see is very sparkling and uh, shimmery, but things are not always what they seem. So with this, um, the moon in the picture, this is your intuition kicking in overdrive and it's kind of telling you as well, you know, um, take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, don't look at what you're seeing, but rather listen to your intuition about what you're feeling. Uh, and what I'm seeing is there's a lot of interaction here with women in general. And um, I honestly, I honestly feel like what this is a precursor to is um, I do feel there's like this 
there is jealousy in your midst, okay? A lot of jealousy. And um, I feel that the jealousy is not showing up for this week, but this is the setting, a precursor for something that is going to happen, possibly in March, April. So this is the beginning, the birth of something. And so the way that you navigate this energy is, um, is very, very important. And that is why it's coming out so early in January. Um, so once again, the people that are very nurturing and very maternal and the, the people that you feel like this, you can't explain it, but you feel this automatic emotional connection to. Those are the people that you can trust and those are the people that, you know, you can um, be sure that they're not going to talk behind your back or, you know, say things to undermine you. Okay, so it's a lot of it is office politics and a lot of it is undercurrent of people putting on like a really nice face but then beneath it it's all fake so it's a veneer that that you're seeing and that's why it's important not to make any type of a judgment or an assessment but also listen to that emotional response that you feel towards people and um the best way that i can explain this is um you know how sometimes you meet somebody right and um, you have a lot of things in common and you don't know why, but it feels like you've known them for a really long time, right? And so when they, they cross all the I's and, you know, dot all the T's, then it feels like, oh, this, I, I wouldn't, you know, mind getting to know this person. I wouldn't mind being friends with this person. Or I see myself, you know, being able to hang out with this person and we'll cultivate like a long lasting friendship. <clears throat> And that's fine. And then there are people that are at first very, very standoffish. You know, like you talk to them and they, they, the way they look at you, you and you guys have really strong intuition. They might look you up and down or they might, you know, assess you and you don't like that. So I, I feel like this energy of intimidation and I feel like somebody who's like scanning you up and down and I don't feel it's in a, it's a love interest that's eyeing you. I feel like it's somebody who is potentially very jealous of you, eyeing you kind of up and down and trying to put a label on you, trying to um, get it into their narrow mindedness that, oh, this is the person that the Aquarius is you know, trying to put labels on you, trying to compartmentalize you. And so that's what I feel is happening. And I feel like they're not bad people, but the way that they do it, it's, it's almost, it, it's very, they, they feel like they're being discreet, but your intuition is so sharp that you catch all the nuances and your intuition is so sharp and so, you know, honed in that you catch them kind of looking at you out of the corner of their eyes. And so it's annoying. It's annoying. But once again, I don't feel like they're bad people. I don't feel that at all. And I feel like that's why you shouldn't say, oh, you know, I caught her or him looking at me, you know, kind of like with the side eye. They must be really envious or they must be really, really bad people. I don't get that. I just feel like things are could potentially flip where the people that you feel this really strong connection to they might over time be very jealous and very emotionally needy whereas the ones that are you know um whereas the ones that are trying to label you or compartmentalize you they might be the ones that you can actually confide in. So I just feel like it's a really important week for you to look at things, but don't make any solid assessment. Don't jump to conclusions and um, let it roll off your back. Okay. I don't see negativity. I don't see people coming to you and, you know, saying hurtful or mean things or talking about you or, or gossips or rumors. I just feel like you're in a new environment. You're making huge waves, huge waves in a really positive way. And uh, your presence is felt very strongly. It's almost like you have this 
really powerful uh, aura about you where you draw a lot of attention, where you draw a lot of energy, where you are kind of like put on the spot. And, you know, with a lot of visibility, it can always be good or bad. So it's just important to just bask in it and, you know, not give it too much credence. And especially when you're dealing with people, meeting people, try not to make those initial assessments about people because there is a major switcheroo within the next few months and you're going to realize, you know, Oh, I was wrong. And especially don't confide in people too early on. Okay. Don't confide in people. Uh, smile, put on a brave face and, you know, go about your business. Don't confide in too many people. So that's the first thing. Um, the other thing that I'm feeling is I, I do sense many of you really need to watch your spending. Um, I felt this in the last reading that I did for the end of December and, you know, that was the Christmas season. So people are prone to overspending, but I feel like this is something that you're carrying over into the new year and this is not a good energy. So you want to curb your spending. You want to be a little bit cautious and you want to make sure you settle for a good deal. So that means be careful about impulse buying, be careful about like, um, Getting, you know, getting frustrated. It's it's almost like you need something. You need this one item and you go to different stores and you're not able to get it and you're frustrated and you're just like, I'm just going to buy it even though the price is marked up or even though it's a little bit outside of my price range or the price range that I prefer to spend for this item. So I'm just going to get it. And then a few weeks later, you find it for, you know, a discounted price. So be careful about that sense of impatience. If you absolutely need it, that's fine. But if you don't need it, if it's just something that is decorative, if it's just something that is frivolous, just be careful about that. Okay, so I feel like you're um, very conscientious about rebuilding your financial wealth and you're conscientious about a lot more conscientious about how much you're spending and, you know, you're trying to curtail the spending. Okay, um, which is all good. What I'm also feeling as well is um, I get the sense that somebody's light is is very, very, very bright and it can be um, it, it can be like blinding to look at. That's what I, I was um, feeling for some of you. This could be honestly, I feel like there's somebody that's like the the star in your eyes. And um, there's somebody that's almost like you're very drawn into their orbit. It's almost like the earth revolving around the sun. You're, it's almost like your world revolves around this person. For some of you, it could be a child because we literally have here the ace of cups. This is brand new love. This is something that is very sacred. And this is something that is very precious. And you spend all of your time catering to this person. It's, it's, it's very pure, um, unconditional love. You know, you really care about this person and they demand a lot of attention. Children do. And so this is like the focal point. I feel like, you know, your, your world revolves around this person. For some of you, it could be a child for others. This is the emergence of a new love. Okay. So Ace of Cups, brand new, something that is, um, newly in the picture and I feel many of you you have been blocking it not if you're a mother but for others of you I feel like if it's a um, somebody that you really 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 like and it's a romantic interest I feel like you have been blocking it you have been like actively blocking it oh no I don't I'm not in love you know, oh no, the person has flaws or, oh no, I'm, I'm not feeling that 100%. You have been blocking it. You have been making excuses. You have been kind of like playing this role of, um, I'm too cool to love this person or, you know, playing the role of being aloof or being detached and even, um, under undermining, you know, oh, they don't mean that much to me. You know, I can live without them. I can, I can, um, I, I don't need to like talk to them all the time. I don't need to text them all the time. So I feel like you've been kind of, um, 
deceiving yourself about how much this person means to you. That's what it feels like to me. And this is sort of like, you know, being in kind of denial about it. But, you know, the person is ultimately blocking out the light of the sun. So somebody means a lot to you. And I feel like this is the week where the emotions kind of wash over you. The emotions kind of wash over you. You're allowing yourself to feel. You're allowing yourself to um, just like sit with the emotions to process, but also to admit to yourself, this is exactly what I'm feeling. And this is these are the emotions that I'm feeling towards this person. And I'm not going to deny it anymore, nor am I going to, you know, undermine or um, underestimate their importance in my life. So I feel like you're coming to the realization that you really love something, you really love somebody, that you really, really, um, that you haven't been truthful and honest with how you felt in the past. But this is the week where it, it, it hits you on a very deep core level about the depth and the strength of your feelings towards somebody towards a thing or towards a person. For some of you, honestly, I feel like it could be work. You're learning something new and uh, the process can make you feel very impatient, okay? So if you're in a new learning environment, if you have to relearn techniques, procedures, um, ways of doing or, you know, steps, and, and I, I see like steps, stepping stones, or I see like steps, um, if you've had to learn something, it can feel a little bit frustrating, I'm not going to lie. And I feel like they're giving you information that you already know, that you've, um, that you've already, it's, it's almost like reinventing the wheel. You, you've already done it, you've already been there. Been there, done that, moving on. And I feel like the pace of it is very slow, so it's really going to... Um, it's going to be a little bit aggravating. So you have to learn to be patient. You have to also learn to, you have to also learn to, you know, to just come to the realization that um, everything will come and happen in due time. There's no use in rushing it. Okay. And then if you're learning this along with other people, you also have to understand that honestly, other people might not make connections as fast as you do. And so they might need information to be repeated. They might need information to be reiterated so that they can absorb the information. Your mind works a mile a minute and other people don't have that luxury. Other people need to process. They need time to really let it sink in. So slowing it down, it, it's not all about you, unfortunately. It's not all about the Aquarius and how they learn. If it's a group environment, the training, the, the learning process has to be fair for everybody. So keeping that in mind, keeping that sense of objectivity that, you know, other people are not as fast as me. Other people are not um, going to absorb the information as well as I do. So I kind of need to slow down too for their sake. So that's what I feel needs to happen. So paradigm shift, okay? Looking at things outside of ourselves and realizing that um, maybe this is catered towards people that are a little bit on the slower end. They need to that extra practice to absorb the information, okay? So I'm not going to dwell too much on that. I just feel like it, it just wouldn't do anything at the end of the day if you're impatient and if you're um, frustrated. It just doesn't serve any purpose because you're still going to have to sit there. You're still going to have to go through the training. You're still going to have to endure it. So you can be, you know, pissed off or you can just learn to let it wash off you. Okay. Um, so spending training, um, I feel like there's a new love. Um, there is a person here that is going to be really significant. And um, I feel, well, what we have here, first of all, this is the King of Wands and uh, Fire Sign, so Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. This is somebody who has overcome really, really insane, insane odds, okay? So 
I see somebody who is uh, in a position of power or prestige, okay, and um, I feel like they could be very, very young for their age, okay? So it could be somebody who is um, an executive in the place that you're working at, who's a director, and they're very, very young. So it's somebody who's like, and, and you, you look at them in awe, and you're just like, how did you get here? How did that happen? And uh, it's somebody who's very courageous. And I feel like they, they have a, a good sense of intuition. They're daring. They're adventurous. They're brave. They take risks, calculated risks. But they are also very dignified. So I, I feel like this might be a person that, um, that really captures your imagination, that you're very much in awe by, okay? And um, I also feel as well they have really, really high expectations. It's almost like they're very hard on themselves. They're very hard on other people. And um, the way to deal with fire signs in general is uh, if they're talking a mile a minute or if they're giving you a lot of assignments, okay? If, like they have unrealistic expectations. Um, the, the best way to deal with, with fire energy is to be very direct, okay? You don't have to, you don't have to, you know, say it in a um, undermining way, but you can just say like, you know, I've never done this before, so um, let me try to figure it out. It might take me a little bit longer, but I will try to figure it out. And so if I could have a little bit more time, it would be really helpful. That way I can do it right. So you have to be a little bit crafty about how you say things. And you have to be crafty about asking for more time if you feel you need more time. You guys have a very good assessment when it comes to your capabilities. You are very realistic when it comes to your capabilities. You know you have a pretty good estimate as to how long it's going to take you to do certain things. And you have a pretty good grasp on what your capabilities are. And so if you phrase it that way, it's going to be a huge load off your back so that you're not, you know, stressed out and you're not, um, and you're not, I guess, like, um, putting a lot of unnecessary pressure on yourself. Okay. So, and doing so communicating your needs. It's going to be it's going to allow the other person to understand where you're coming from but also I feel like it's going to make a very good impression on the other person that you admire that has although they have unrealistic expectations and they expect perfection um, I feel like if you're candid and if you're honest um, it means a lot to them so you know they they value that honesty so just tell them I've never done this before so it might take me a little bit longer and just so I don't um, cut corners or just so I can do a thorough job the first time, I, I feel like I would need a little bit more time to complete the task. Saying it like that would actually, you know, alleviate a lot of the, the tension, okay? So I see this element here about um, learning, um, possibly hitting as well, a learning curve. It's not anything that you can't overcome, but I definitely feel like, you know, it's like been there, done that, let's move on to the next thing. But I feel like they're laying the foundation and the groundwork for you because things are going to get harder progressively. Okay, so like there is a learning curve that's, that's in the picture. And that's why they're starting out with things on very slowly building that foundation of knowledge before they can thrust you into harder things. So that's why you need to be mentally present even at the very beginning so that you can, it's like knowledge builds on itself. So you can't skip these steps. Okay. So that it's a little bit aggravating, but you need to be mentally present. Okay. The other thing that is coming up in, in the picture here is, um, I have a person from the past, blast from the past here. We do have the Six of Cups. And um, what I'm feeling is, I, I feel, 
I feel somebody who feels like they're not good enough. And I feel like this is a, a love interest. Somebody felt like they're not good enough. And so if you're wondering why, you know, like, why did things end? Why did they stop talking to me? Um, why didn't they respond? Or, you know, I, I feel somebody who's dealing with, um, you know, like self-doubt. I feel somebody who is also dealing with, um, I'm not good enough for the Aquarius. I'm not, you know, financially where I need to be. I'm not very abundant. Um, I don't have the, the mental capabilities. I feel like someone who's dealing with a lot of self-doubt. And I feel almost like you're too much for them. And that can be many, that can play out in many, many scenarios. But what I feel is, um, I see many of you, you're, you're racing through a lot of topics. You can be talking about something like, you know, like one topic, and then your mind races and changes direction completely, veers off into a different topic. And so you can, you know, keep all of these topics afloat. And you can weave back and forth in between different conversations. And the other person, it's almost like they're, they're dizzy. They're very dizzy uh, having conversations with you. And I feel like they feel inadequate. Okay, so I, I don't know if it's mentally they feel inadequate or they just feel overall inadequate. Um, and I, I feel like this might be why they didn't approach you. This might be why they are looking at you from afar, but they're not really approaching you. And then I'm also feeling, I'm also feeling as well, you're grappling with your emotions. You're grappling with your emotions. Like, what do I do? I, I feel so strongly about a person or, yeah, I, I feel like it's a person. I feel so, this overwhelming surge of emotions. What do I do? And... I feel like there's somebody blocking out their feelings here. And I feel like it's the other person. You've done it in the past, but this week you're allowing it to kind of, you're allowing yourself to feel these things. Whereas I feel like the other person is kind of blocking their emotions because they feel a little bit inadequate. Um, there, whatever has been confusing, whatever has been kind of uh, in limbo or stuck, I definitely feel there will be some type of a reckoning, some type of a uh, information revealed, okay? We have as well, this is the other ace that you've got. This is the ace of swords, okay? Piercing through a troublesome situation, making sense of thing, gaining the mental clarity and the perspective on a situation is right next to the moon on a situation that was very muddled, that was very confusing, that was very um, hazy. And I almost feel like uncomfortable. It's the realm of emotions. It's the realm of uh, fantasy and emotion. And I feel almost like it's a difficult place for an air sign to be in. So I feel like there's a piercing of that and a moving forward because you have some clarity and you have some information coming through, okay? So Aquarius, it's a hodgepodge type of a week. Lots of things are happening. I don't see too much busy energy. I see you doing a lot more relaxing is what I'm seeing. Like um, you're sitting still, you're not moving too much. You're not, you know, um, running yourself ragged. But I feel like that mental space, the, the wheels are always spinning. Um, but it's going to be a good week. But I, I feel like there's definitely a lot of emotional things creeping, bubbling up to the surface that you're going to have to assess and re-examine. Okay?